Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jack Ford. Four-time Tony Award winner Harvey Firestein is back where audiences love him most on the stage. Firestein, the New York theater legend, whose credits as actor and playwright include, among others, Torch Song Trilogy, Hairspray, Kinky Boots, never shied away from a challenging role or from a political one. He's taking on both in oh, Bella Bella, a new solo show written by and starring Harvey Firestein to mesmerizing effect. The play tells the story of firebrand New York politician Bella Abzo, the feminist icon and trailblazing social activist whose career in Congress ended with an unsuccessful run for the U.S. Senate back in 1976, but whose legacy has inspired a generation of women entering politics. Take a look. Me, I was born here. These are my people. I looked like them, I sounded like them, and uh, as I predicted, the press was intrigued. She has the shoulders of a steam pipe fitter <laughs> and the strut of a plain clothes cop. She'll give you a chop in the ribs, then powder her nose while you sink to the ground. <laughs> Sexist? Oh, yeah. But also the stuff of which legends are made. Far better that than the way the New York Times endorsed me. More often than not, she'll say the right thing. <laughs> And joining us now to talk about his one-person show, Bella Bella, what inspired it as well as to reflect on some of his own trailblazing career in theater as actor, playwright, and Broadway legend, Harvey Firestein. It's so nice to see you well, again. Well, lovely to see you again. We've done this before. Yes, you indeed. You and I are not strangers to television. <laughs> Always nice to do it again, <laughs> though. First question, I, and I'm sure as a writer, this is something you're asked often, but to me, it, it's always, I think, the most curious question, is, is the inspiration. With all the things you could write about, all the things you've written in the past, what was it that made you say, this is the next thing I want to do, the next thing I want to write? Liz Abzo, one of Bella's daughters, had been hocking me for years to, to write something about her parents, and she wanted a musical. I said, <laughs> you know, what kind of music? Martin, Martin, Bella, Bella. <laughs> I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. So, but I, but I read a lot of the material, and I put it aside. Um, and then when Hillary lost the election, some of the stuff I heard sounded very familiar, like the anti-Israel stuff and a whole bunch of those really div divisive arguments. And I said, this sounds like, and I pulled out the Bella stuff, and there it was. I said, oh my God, it's the same playbook. It's the same playbook being used 40 years later. And, um, and I got interested in it again. So I looked at Bella's career and saw this moment where she decided to go from Congress to Senate, and she was winning People and she was sex. winning, and she would have gotten to be the nominee, the first woman senator from New York State ever. And the party, the Democratic Party, came in and undercut her. And I said, this is interesting. There's the story. Like. And, then, and then, as I did more and more research, one of the things that popped out at me, which I think is very much in the play, is that women are not the minority in this country. They are the majority, which we never think about, and they could have it any way they want, and still they hand the power over. And you talk about it, and, and being honest, that, you know, that. more women than men, and what do they do? They say, all right, I'll vote with him. I'll vote the, it, well, this is what happened. So I had a line in the play where I said, um, you know, the Irish will vote this way, and the independents will vote this way, and this, which brings us to women who will vote the way men tell them to do. So I'm, in, I'm doing a rehearsal, and Gloria Steinem, the blessed Gloria Steinem was sitting there watching, right. and who was a very good friend of Bella's and was a wonderful friend to us, helping us in these ways. So she's watching and she stands up and goes, nope, nope, you gotta change that. I said, what do you mean? She said, not women, white women. She said, look at the last election. It was white women that put Trump in. It was white women who didn't vote for Obama that could have. And, I, and so I rewrote the line where I'm saying, and women will vote, and then I say, no, more accurately, white, white. women will vote, mm. his, who could join the minority sisters and elect anyone Anybody. they want, anyone they want, but who will, history shows us, vote the interests of the men who support them. Yeah. And the audience goes, oh, it's very powerful. Oh, yeah, yeah you're very and then, powerful. And, I, and, then I, and then I just, and I cover it with facts. I'm just talking facts. <laughs> That's great. And then I go on with the play. <laughs> I, I get to tell you, I saw it last week, and it was marvelous. It I'm really so was mar marvelous. And, and I had met Bella before, so to, to see it and, you know, having lived through that whole era. Yeah. But 
So you have this idea, and it, it, it starts to come to fruition. You told me originally what you wrote was about two and a half hours long. Yeah. I wanted to get it down to like 84 minutes or so. I felt bad for the woman who was going to have to play it. <laughs> uh huh. How did that happen? Yeah. So did, when you went into this and decided to write, had you initially said, not only am I going to write it, I'm going to play her? So how did that come about? Um, I almost never write anything for myself. Why not? Um, because I did when I was a kid, right. you know, and my, and my, uh, you, you outlive that part of your ego. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm much more interested in writing than I am in acting, though I enjoy acting and I love being on stage, but you see how many movies and TV shows I'm in. Mm -hmm. It doesn't interest me that much. I mean, playing other people is a good way to get out of yourself, but if you're writing, you're doing that as well. Anyway, so no, I was not writing it for myself. I actually thought that one of her friends would, would play it, you know, I sort of hope Bette Midler would do it. Right. Um, anyway, but you write and then you, you go out um, and we did a reading with Patti Lapone. She was wonderful to come in and do that for us. But even she, she said, I think you should play it. Mm. Leave me alone. And then, you know, and then we did a couple of other readings and I spoke to some other actresses with all kinds of different results. And then the thing came to me, this, this, this feminist idea came to me that I'm not still, I'm still arguing about. Mm -hmm. As a man, playwright, and I'm writing a role for a woman, and even if I'm empowering her in that role, Aren't I still a man putting words in a woman's mouth? Aren't I still making her a puppet of my brain? And I, and I, and I, you know, when you're in this feminist world of, of Bellas and you're really thinking about that stuff hard, it really started haunting me. And I said, I don't want to do that to a woman. I mean, I'll be very happy when women play the role, right. but to first launch it, don't I have to be honest enough to say I'm willing to stand up there and say these ideas myself? And as soon as I decided that, I said, no drag. I have to do it. If it's going to be honest, it's going to be honest. I'm going to stand there as Harvey. I, I will have the affectations of Bella or whatever. I did know the woman. Um, but I'm not going to do drag. I'm not going to wear a wig and a dress. I'm going to present these ideas. Here are the ideas. You do with the ideas as you wish. And I think there's an honesty to it. There is, and I got to tell you, and I hope you take this as a compliment. You, you get into it, and you're not thinking, this is Harvey playing Bella. Right, that's what I you're hear. You're just, you're seeing Bella's story, uh, which, which I think is kind of fascinating. Because it's, as you well, said, to me, it's fascinating. It's, it's you, you're on stage like this. Yeah. You got a black shirt on and black jeans, exactly. and you show up, you know, the first scene, you've got the red hat sort of behind you. That's it. And after that, it's just a prop. Well, I'll tell you, Marlo Thomas, who was one of Bella's closest friends, I had sent her the script, as I did with Lily Tomlin, with Shirley MacLaine, with a lot of her friends, to... Um, to, to see, get their input and all that. And Marlo didn't answer me as to what she thought of the script. So I sent it to her again, no answer. So they sent it again, she said, oh, Phil isn't feeling well, I haven't been able to read it. Anyway, I never got an answer from, from uh -huh. Marlo. She shows up in my dressing room last week in tears, and she says, I gotta tell you the truth, I read the play, I thought the play was great, I said, there's no way you could pull it off. And I love you too much, and I respect you as an artist too much to, to be negative, so I just said, let him do it, and I'll just mm -hmm. stay away. She said, and then I heard different, and I came to see it, and she said, two minutes into the play, I was with Bella. I was with Bella. No, that's I so the same thing. Her, her press secretary said to me, it's like spending a night with Bella again, except my teeth aren't gritted. <laughs> <laughs> but your jaw is tired from laughing, which is uh, a good thing. He's, he's, he, he, she put him through it. And it's interesting how this shows how powerful humor can be when you're talking about social issues. Yeah. You know, and I'm trying to, I'm watching this, I'm trying to memorize some of the lines, so when we talk, I can toss them out a little bit. You know, and there's so many good ones. Yes. But I, I think it's one of the great things about theater is that, and, and what, what this makes you do, even though you're talking about something that took place back in the 70s, it makes you think, and it makes you think about today. So going into it, did you say, Here's a story I'm going to tell because I want people to use this as a prism for today, or is it just that it, it just happens? I think it just happens, but I also did obviously see it for today. Like I said, it was sort of inspired by Hillary, who saw it the other night. Oh, she did? It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she sent me her book and okay. said, I'm now a fan. And oh, yes, great. lovely. Love great. The, uh, uh, President Clinton and, mm -hmm. and she were there on opening night, um, which is what we've had a lot. Carol Maloney's been there, um, Ruth Messenger. A lot of New York politicians have yeah. been there, which has been wonderful. But you go into this stuff. 
being true to your character, always try to be true to your character. But when you're reading her notes and it says, Harry Truman, a man who was so thin-skinned he demanded a loyalty oath from everyone who worked for him. I said, wait, this sounds a little familiar. Yeah, have we heard when this did we one? hear this before? Or, or about Gerald Ford pardoning Nixon. Yeah. And she says, thanks to you, everyone now knows as long as you have powerful friends, you can get away with anything. Yeah, that's all right. And I said that I think the great thing is these things resonate today yeah. with us. Um, a, a little bit something about her. I, again, I was surprised when I was looking looking some of the research here to remember she was only in the House for six years mm. in the House of Representatives. Became enormously powerful in six years. Yeah. Runs for the Senate, and the, the story is all about. It takes place in the hotel the night of the balloting, uh, and basically it takes place in one room, the bathroom that's in the it. hotel suite. Uh, but you look back and you think, what could have been for her? You know, could she have been well, the first Shirley president? Well, Shirley she McLean, have... who of course believed in her like nobody's yeah. business. They were best friends. But Shirley said to me, if she had only stayed, if she just stayed 10 years, she could have been the first woman president. Mm. So I write the play and I sort of have that in the play a little bit, but I'm not really, and I go to Harold Holzer, her press secretary, and I said, Harold, I need your comment about this. I need to know what your feeling is. Could she have been president? He looked at me and said, are you kidding? She was too radical. She got along with no one. She fought with everybody. Her ideas were her ideas, and she kept them, and she was much too strong and much too 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 hard to negotiate with. Isn't that, isn't that interesting that that would be a disqualifier, that you're too strong, you believe too fervently in your ideas, you know, to, to remember bend. what we did to Hillary. Yeah. We made her lower her voice. To remember yeah. there was Hillary Clinton and there was Hillary Rodham Clinton, the candidate, and she had a different sound to her voice and everything. What we do to women, oh, it's terrible. amazing. It's interesting. I had a, just as an aside, I had a woman on who wrote a book about um, how you can help to instruct women to run for office. And one of the first chapters she talks about, why is it that men, even if they're completely unqualified, say, yeah, I can win that office. And women, if they're, even if they're completely qualified, say, I don't know if I could win exactly. that office. Well, that's one of the opening lines of the play. Right. She, says, she says, they handed me a, a, a survey. Uh, would you vote for a woman if she was qualified? She says, why does a woman have to be qualified when a man just has to be a man? That's right. It's the same theory. Yeah. Let, me, let me jump a little bit. Because again, well, it's just it's like, shocking that we haven't moved beyond that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Long time. Look how we're looking at, at the female candidates right now, mm -hmm. how we pick them apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very different. Let me talk a little bit about it. I just want to give folks some of a, a sense of your own history. And I remember you know, reading up some stuff on you, seeing that you talked about when you were 10 years old going to see Fiddler. Mm -hmm. And how it was kind of a revelation for you in a lot of ways. Is, is that one of the things that you think pushed you in, in the direction, this journey into theater and writing? Mm, you know, the, it, it, what I always tell people, the easiest way to express my life is saying yes. Mm. Every day, all day long, people are asking you things. 99% mm. of the time, we're too tired, we're busy, we have other plans, whatever. Life doesn't get better when you say no. Not necessarily get better when you say yes, but there's get that harder. chance, yeah. there's that chance. <laughs> Things will change when you say yes. When you say no, nothing changes. Mm -hmm. And so when I was a kid, I was an art student at the High School of Art and Design on 57th and 2nd Avenue. A kid in my class's mother was starting a community theater group. She said, you want to go make posters? We went to make posters. I'm now... Uh, a legend. Yeah, you are indeed. <laughs> but isn't it interesting how your life can turn on an event Absolutely. like that? Absolutely. But only if you're willing to turn and with it. And to say yes. I you have to say yes. You, you, you mentioned before, just a couple more quick questions before I let you go. And and, and talking about the, the notion of how I thought we were going to do a number of Fiddler. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> but but uh, La Caja Fall, we can do all sorts of numbers here. All, some of my favorites ah. that you did. But what is it about the writing that you think? Because obviously, as I mentioned in the introduction, your fans love to see you on stage. You know, and have had so many great and very different roles. Yeah. And to, to have that kind of adulation. And look, I've never been an actor. But I, I've been to shows thinking, what a great feeling that must be to stand on a stage at the end of a performance and have everybody basically saying, thank you, that was wonderful. Yeah, there is a, there is yet, a great yeah. yes to that. And yet writing, look, I don't pretend to be, I've written three novels, and it's, it's hard. 
It takes a lot of time. It's a lot of work. You said, you know, two and a half hours worth of writing. So what is it about the writing that you find makes you say, this is, look, I enjoy it all, but this is the thing that is, is best. They both, you have to look at life through both, and you have to look at characters through both, and people, and try and understand both of them do that, give you that challenge. But writing actually uses everything you know right up to that moment. You must have remembered that when you were writing a novel. Everything you know, the cake recipe that came in this morning, the newspaper that you read, everything you know goes into your mind and gets mushed up in there and comes out in the writing. Not everything is usable in acting, though when you get a great role like Fiddler or like Hairspray or like Bella, a lot does come out. I mean, in Bella, I'm able to, uh, I don't want to get emotional, I, I see my mother all the time because she was a bella mm. She wore a hat mm. uh, when she was president of her Hadassah group in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. She wore a hat. Um, and it brings it back. In fact, one night I looked out in the audience and I saw that was my mother sitting sitting there. I mean, I knew it wasn't, right. but it could have been. Um, so when, when you play a role that brings all of that, all those women from my childhood, all those men from my childhood back, when I talk about going to Temple and all that, you know, it's Bella's life, but I, you know, I get to live it. So it's wonderful. Um, but writing is, you're creating something, I don't know, they're both things that'll never exist without that moment. That's what art is, right? right. You, you create in that moment and it will never exist any other moment, but acting, is more that I don't know, yeah. but you do notice okay. I don't do a lot of TV and movies. That's, I know that, that, that bores me. Uh, well, th th let me tell you, but I love I, the stage. Ah, uh, and and it's it's obvious when we see you here again. It's Bella Bella, and as I said before, it is great theater because of what you just said. It makes you think. Um, it 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 makes you it makes you gasp sometimes, and you're taken aback, and it makes you laugh. We're in our third week, and I'm getting letters from people who've seen the show three times already. Yeah. Right. A play, not a musical. Yeah. It's touching people in some sort of magic way, yes. and I'm thrilled. You should be. I'm well, thrilled. Well, you're a magician, and, it, right. and it's, it's, it's so delightful to spend it's some time telling you. Again, a great show. Yeah. People go out to see it, and we'll look forward for whatever that next project is. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be there. Thanks, Harvey. Good to see you.